You're very welcome to the Rudiments uh, information. So I hope you have a wonderful year. We've been through a very challenging period of time. I want to thank all the parents and the students for all their support in ensuring that not only do we survive that, but we actually throve through much of it. Uh, a number of people will speak to you. Uh, Mr O'Shea, the year head, will speak to you later on. And Miss Angela Kern from the Guidance Department will also talk. I have very f a few uh, little points I want to emphasise. The first thing is, is that the newsletter is a great uh, exhibition piece for the students and their work. So if your child has not uh, tried to have anything published in it, uh, it's something that you should encourage. The second thing is, it is our main means of communication, and I would encourage you and all the students to read it, because it carries a wealth of information and reflects very well on the huge opportunities available to students within the college. The second thing that I've uh, commented on previously is an untidy, disorganised journal often reflects an untidy, disorganised student. To achieve your potential or to engage fully with the college means that you have to be organised. We check the journals. It's not just about reading through the rules with them and signing it. There's some excellent resources in the journals for you to use with your child in supporting them to achieve their academic potential and also to engage. One of the other points that I emphasise quite a lot, and this is in the newsletter a lot, is about the use of social media. Students need to be educated about it. They know what's right and wrong, uh, but they do need reminders. They do need reminders that it is a very serious matter to post anything inappropriate or to like anything inappropriate, and that the fear of disciplinary consequences shouldn't be the reason for doing that, though there are disciplinary consequences. It should be about decency, about being kind, and about treating people properly. They face a far more complex society than we faced at their age. The issues that we cover in school range from everything from sexual and mental health to the issues of consent, to respect for difference, uh, to apathy, both in terms of the values, religion, and being active citizens, um, and a, a multitude of other uh, uh, issues. We do quite a lot with the students, but we can't do everything. And those conversations are conversations that I personally feel as a parent that I should be having with my child. So that the values that they develop are reflective of our education system and their home values. Of course children will fail. And one of the best things they learn is that there are consequences to that failure. Uh, that makes them think a lot more about it in the future, and those consequences need, all, need not always be negative for them. Sometimes it can be that somebody else is hurt, offended, feels left out, feels excluded. Making them understand that is a central part of their growth as young men and development. So in summary of that is, while the college does a great deal, it doesn't do everything, and it can't. Those conversations about values, about uh, what we expect, about what we expect to be our, our young men to become, are conversations that happen at home. There are often questions, and I'm sure that as, as the school changes, you have questions. The parent handbook answers 99% of those questions, and I want to thank the Parents Association and all those parents who contribute to the parent handbook uh, in, answering, in, in answering those questions. If you haven't seen it, you should find it. It's easy and it's uh, very accessible. Uh, you can download it from the website. We're often looking at surveys and people say, I don't know how bullying is dealt with in the school. It's dealt with very effectively and the chances are that your child, uh, many of the people say that they don't, haven't had experience of it. But watching for signs of bullying, either your child taking part in exclusion or being nasty something else, is something we strongly encourage, or indeed watching the, for the effects of it, where somebody doesn't want to come to school, they complain of mysterious stomach cramps, or whatever. Keep an eye on your child. This is a challenging period, emerging from childhood into young adulthood. Uh, but we do, we do this, and we've accompanied people all the way through it, and very successfully. In our society, unfortunately, we have an unhealthy relationship with alcohol. Some second years will have no experience of this whatsoever, and others will have exposure to it. It depends on both their own level of social independence, your level of monitoring, uh, and whether they're engaged with other students, or indeed people outside the college who are exposed to these. 
alcohol is a very serious issue. We do have education about alcohol and substance abuse, but again, these are things that the Parents Association, I'm very grateful for, have, ha have organized talks, but these are conversations that you have to have at home. Substance abuse, well, we live in a society where illegal substances are readily available, not in the school, and we monitor that very carefully, and there are serious repercussions for anyone bringing any substance into a school. There are even more serious uh, repercussions, criminal uh, consequences for anybody passing or indeed dealing in an illegal, illegal substance. Yes, we do have drug testing in the school, and yes, we do use it. We invite people to, to first to participate on a voluntary basis if we have concerns, and then we have a support programme if they're test, test positive. Uh, if they're test, test positive, it's a pastoral matter, and they're encouraged and supported, but then after, if there's a 30-day test and they prove positive again, that moves on then into a disciplinary consequence. So again, I don't want to frighten you, and I haven't had experience of it with second years, but there is a program that's age appropriate as we move through the college. If you don't know what the RSE and SPHE program is, you should make it your business to do so as a parent. It is available in, uh, on our website. We constantly say work, rest and pay, play. You'll get lots of advice on this. Uh, as a parent of two boys who've been through it, the one thing I would say is get the balance right, get rid of the phone when they're actually working. They're kidding themselves and they're kidding you and they're kidding everybody else if they have access to their social media account. Uh, it'll, it's just a distraction. And again, keeping an eye on your child, knowing where they are, knowing how much money they have to, at their disposal. All these things are very necessary. Uh, my experience of children who've run into difficulty is where people have taken their eye off the ball and they haven't really uh, stayed close and kept the conversations open with them. Uh, so lastly, and I'm finished, I want to thank the students and indeed the parents, but particularly the students, for their behaviour and compliance with the restrictions that we've had. These are very challenging. Uh, there is a slight temptation to think that the COVID-19 has disappeared. That is very far from the truth. Your son's need, our son needs a reminder that on the way to and from school to observe social distancing and wear a mask. Uh, in school to do so, and we've sent out a letter to, for you to make them aware of all the information available to them. So we're asking that in this run-up to when hopefully all the restrictions will be removed, that you reiterate and re-emphasize that message, the need to prevent the transmission of infection remains. And that is a critical thing in a school of over a thousand students, that we do everything possible to do that. So I want to thank you for all the support we've received. There was great words of encouragement from parents, staff, uh, really appreciate that. And now we're trying to reintroduce and reinvigorate our co-curricular program back to where it was. Some students are very good, in fact the busiest students are involved in many things, other students are not. Uh, it's perfectly fine if your child is not involved in the co-curricular program within the school but heavily involved outside the school. They will miss out on some of the social interaction with their peers in the school, but I suppose the priority is that they are actively engaged and that we keep them there. Uh, again, look at the newsletter. There's so many opportunities for your son to engage and to create engagement for others. I do hope that uh, they, they avail of those opportunities. And I will hand you over to Ms. Curran now, who will talk about the guidance program. And again, our aim, our joint aim, is for your child to be safe, happy, and achieving their potential and engaged. Thank you very much. Good evening. Tonight I want to bring you through the guidance program for the Rudiment students. There are three strands of the guidance program across all years in Belvedere College. The first is the educational aspect, the vocational aspect, and the social and personal aspect. So let me explain what they actually are. In the educational guidance and counselling, we provide support at key moments during the student's time in school. The guidance counsellor is involved in helping with the transition from primary school to secondary school and with helping with subject choices in fourth year. The guidance counsellor also works with students on developing their study skills and future prospects. In the vocational aspect, we work closely with students fourth, fifth and sixth year regarding their career and their college uh, choices. And in the social and personal guidance and counselling, the guidance counsellor is available to meet students and to talk about any issue that may arise in their school life. In addition to this, they also have access to an expansive pastoral team in the college. So there's some key dates I'd like to explain to you around uh, the guidance programme for the actual students in Rudiments. 
So each year we run a study skills week and that is at the end of September. And this year, as it was last year, it will be recordings of uh, the different um, aspects that we cover. We cover everything from the nutrition to how to actually approach a study to motivation. And we also have the state examiner, Mr. John Broderick, and he talks about state exams and how to exam technique and how, it, um, how to apply it in exam situations. We also have ongoing lunchtime talks, which are also recorded, and they're available to all students within the school, and it's a great time in second year to even begin to getting in involved in that, to start listening to actually what careers are out there, what past pupils are doing, um, what kind of colleges that are available, between apprenticeships, there's so many different areas that students can go into um, after school um, now, and there's so many different choices. It's great for students to get ahead um, in the junior cycle and to begin looking at these areas. We also um, look at one-to-one -one appointments by request, so if you feel that your son may need additional help around the educational aspect, or vocational, or the pastoral, um, he can get referred through his form tutor. We also um, run a mind mapping presentation, so for the year as well, we did this part of Study Skills Week, where we teach them all about how to use mind maps to actually study, and the impact of, um, of them, and how effective they are. And this year, we're delighted to bring on, online as well a new junior cycle guidance programme, and I'll bring you through a little bit more information on that in a second. Key resources to note would be the Belvedere College website. On the left-hand side, when you log on to the Belvedere website, you will see that there is a page called Guidance. When you click on that, it brings you onto the website. We've updated the website over the last couple of years, and it's fully up-to-date with lots of information from students' uh, study skills and things to uh, different events that are on, a calendar of events that are on. Um, so it would be something that you should keep an eye on. We also have study skills information packs up there for you to download if you wanted to have a look around the different year groups. And we also have timetables and other tools that they can use to actually help them um, during the year with the study and things. So just a quick review of what's involved, as I said, in Study Skills Week. So we have the body and brain fitness for studying. We have motivation and goal setting, study skill methods, organisation and skills, manage your time effectively, and also um, exam technique is what the areas will be covering. In addition to the Study Skills Week, um, the students will also have access to a Study Skills class where myself and Miss O'Dunn, who is the guidance counsellor in the school, will go around and give a class on the following areas. We look at the importance of the place of study, how to be organised in weekly timetables and how to set them up, how to become motivated and how to track your goals. And this is just building on what we've already done with them in first year as part of the transition programme. Um, note taking skills, how to make good notes. Uh, revising and exam preparation, again, how to do that, how to be prepared well in advance. And then exam performance. So when they've done all the hard work, um, how do you perform an exam and, and skills to help you around that. So that's a follow on class from the Study Skills Week. Um, lastly, I'd just like to take you through the new, new Junior Cycle Guidance Programme. It's developed by the NCGE and a number of guidance counsellors, which I was involved in um, and work closely with them. And we've developed a brand new guidance programme for junior cycle students to support them. The NCGE is a national centre for guidance in education. It's an agency of the Department of Education who have responsibility to support and develop guidance practice in all areas of education and to inform the policy of the department in the field of guidance. This new programme includes the following. Goal setting, again following up on the last uh, year in the transition end of things. Identity, my mindset, my unique values, pathways, opening up the whole idea about like your pathway when you finish school as well. Again, engaging them much earlier. And then uh, presentations. So that's what we'll be covering from the guidance point of view for uh, Rudiments uh, this year. So now I'd like to pass you over to Mr O'Shea, uh, the year head for Rudiments. Thank you for your time this evening. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Brendan O'Shea. I'm the Rudiments year head. I uh, just want to introduce myself uh, before um, I talk about the role of the year head and expectations for the year. I'm 12 years teaching in Belvedere College, teaching geography and history. And before that, I was um, a subject coordinator and teacher of religion and geography at Torvald School. And before that, then, I was a dean of a boarding school of 160 students that looked after uh, students from about 15 different nationalities. So I would have quite a range of experience, but with this role, I still learn every day. You know, there's something, always something new comes about every day. The role of your head is um, uh, it's a mix of both pastoral care and direction discipline. I work uh, with collaboratively with the form tutors, um, um, Ms. Broderick, Ms. Broderick uh, Mr. Duggan, um, Ms. Harrahill, uh, Ms. McCarthy, uh, Mr. O'Sullivan and uh, Ms. Tobin. I also work with the subject teachers and 
on a day-to-day -day basis, and also you, the parents, you're the primary educators, you send your students, your sons, here to Belvedere for the best possible education, and I'm really behind you and try to support you as best I can with that. And I also work with other staff, such as the AN department. Um, personally, I will be an advocate for your son. I will do my best to support him whatever, uh, in whatever way it's required. I have an educational philosophy, and I suppose it's based both on my personal experiences and on my professional experiences, and that is a belief that there is no such thing as a bad student. There may be poor behaviours, etc., but there's no such thing as a bad student. Uh, all students are human beings making a journey through life, and if they make mistakes, they have to learn from them, move on, and uh, store that down to an experience. I'm very honest, and I tr try my, in my daily interactions to be as honest w uh, regarding everything. For example, I w if something can be done, and if you ask me to do something, I will do it, and I'll say it can be done. If it can't be done, I'll also say it can't be done. Um, and fair, you know, I deal with the behaviour. I never, ever personalise it with the students, and I genuinely care uh, for the students uh, in my role. Like, I always want to see them develop. I always want to see them to be the best uh, that uh, they can be and I will deal with the behaviour, as I said. Um, I like to build trust with both students and parents co through communication. I'm a great believer in old-fashioned communication. I'm a great believer in you picking up the phone and talking to me if there's something on your mind, if there's a concern, if there's an issue that you'd like me to address. I believe in listening. I believe in um, trying to address it uh, as best I can through that type of communication. Yes, of course, there's emails you can contact me with, etc. But if there's an issue that's really concerning you, please, please contact me. I have no problem talking to you. If I, you don't get me straight away, I will get back to you and I'll have a chat with you about it. And sometimes, you know, we may disagree, you know, that's okay too. But I think talking is so important. And I think uh, it's, it's still talking and listening for me are still the most effective forms of communication. And nothing in the new world of technology has shown me that there's that as effective as talking and listening. Uh, so if there is an issue, please, please contact me. Um, the academic progress, the primary uh, educators there would be the subject teachers. They'd be monitoring the academic progress in each subject. I would obviously liaise with the subject teachers about that. Pastoral issues, the well-being of, the, of your sons uh, would be the form tutor. Again, I keep an eye as well on that, as does chaplains, but the primary role would be of the form tutor would be to address pastoral issues. I will step in in certain issues, maybe pastoral, but if there's issues with behaviour, that's sort of sometimes where m my role um, becomes very, very uh, important, and it'll be escalated to me if there's ongoing behavioural issues, and I will contact you, and I would implore you, if I phone you about uh, your son misbehaving, Please don't take it personal. Please don't think you know that uh, you know we're against your son. We're working with your son. Sometimes we just have to nip that in the bud and make sure that he gets back on an even track. Um, I just want to talk a bit about COVID. Um, COVID, as Mr. Foley rightly pointed out, hasn't gone away, and these are the very dangerous times now. And so, at some levels, without frightening you, it's when we we drop our guard. We think it's all finished now. The vast majority of the population are vaccinated. This is where we could have significant issues if we don't continue to follow the regulations and rules set down by the uh, Department of Education. Um, so we need to keep our guard up right till we're told that we don't have to do these uh, rules and routines anymore. The classrooms are reconfigured, same as they were last year. Uh, we don't live in a perfect world. The, you know, the, while we'd love to have perfect classrooms, it's just not physically possible in the campus this side. But the classrooms are designed and configured to be safe. That's still our primary goal because we're still in this COVID environment. Um, the students sit 1.1 uh, metres apart as uh, outlined by the DES and um, they're located in base classrooms. So they sit in these classrooms for English, Irish, Maths, History, Geography, RE, CSP and SPHE. They'll move about for their option subjects, their science subjects, uh, PE and some of the language subjects. These classrooms are open at 8 a.m. in the morning and you know if it's possible get in as close to 8 a.m. because they can get some work done if they need to. Um, they must hand sanitize in the way into and out of the rooms. They must continue to wear face masks at all times unless they're eating especially on the corridor etc and the face masks must be worn properly and again you know I think it's important 
to uh, re-emphasise uh, this information to your, to your sons. There are no lockers available, and I know that creates issues, especially for second years, because second years are coming from where they had a base classroom in first year, where they were there for nearly all their subjects. Now they're moving around the school that tiny bit more, um, and that, that can be an issue for them. So they need to make sure they're organised from the night before. They need to make sure that uh, uh, they take what they need with them. Um, all classes continue to have a seating plan, and our students must stick to that. There's to be no sharing of materials, so they need to be organised to make sure they have all their equipment in. Um, they continue to have their small break in their classrooms, but then at lunchtime they go to the new ref uh, for their lunch. Uh, we have a one-way system still in place, and again, I've reinforced uh, with the students the importance to follow respiratory hygiene. Um, also, if a student presents with a COVID symptom, he will be brought to the isolation room, you will be contacted, and you'll have to take him straight away to get tested, etc. The same as last year. Um, you seek G uh, GP advice uh, and relate the same to the school. What are the most important aspects for Rudiman students? Well, firstly, to have a positive learning experience. Now, a positive learning experience doesn't mean it's fun and games all the time. Like, that's not what a positive learning experience means. Of course, they have to enjoy the subjects. Of course, they have to like the subjects. Of course, they have to have confidence in the subjects. But a lot of the time, they can have a positive learning experience by working. You know, that gives them enjoyment. That gives them a sense of achievement, and they can see their achievement. If they work solidly, consistently, uh, um, that will give them a positive learning experience. Um, Rudiman's boys should feel happy. They should feel healthy. They should believe uh, they can achieve their academic potential and co-curricular potential. And my experience and collective wisdom from different colleagues over the years and from research, etc., shows that students tend to be content when they're working hard in class and engaged in co-curricular activities. So this idea of coming to Belvedere College and not taking part in any co-curricular ac activity, that, to be quite frank, baffles me. I can't understand that. Uh, when there's so many opportunities available. It, they may be doing two sports outside school, but it doesn't mean that they can't get involved in some other aspect of co-curricular activity uh, within their year group, or such as the VDP that goes through all the different year groups. So I would emphasise happy and healthy. I think there's a marriage there with hard work in class and getting involved. Um, I, w I just want to focus on that word happy. Every, you, all parents and guardians want their sons to be happy. I know that. You love your, your, your sons, and I think the primary thing is you want them to be happy. Over the years in this job, I know that students have difficult adolescence. Uh, 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 they can have a difficult adolescence. They can have di difficult months. They can have even difficult years uh, where they have challenges, uh, both emotional and personal, etc. And I think it's important that you're aware of that, because sometimes when your son is going through a very difficult time, you think it's just your son and you're operating in an island. As a year head, I would come across several times when students need help, need support. And if they're struggling, please, please contact us. Let us know if there's something on their mind, if there's a worry, if they're feeling depressed, etc. Please let us know. And we'll obviously point your son towards a chaplain. Um, we'll sometimes say, just bring them to a GP uh, and get, uh, get, 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 get medical advice, etc. Don't operate on your own with that. We're here to support you with that. Um, so I just wanted to emphasise that because sometimes we have this culture of happy, wonderful, everything is perfect. No, we're human beings. Life isn't always perfect. There are significant challenges that we all face. And being an adolescent, being a teenager has its challenges, more so perhaps than when we were that age. Um, I, another aspect for Rudiman students is that they respect themselves. I think that's something that we try to cultivate uh, between subject teacher, form tutor, myself, etc. Obviously, you as primary educators uh, emphasise that within the as well. It's really important that they respect themselves because it's now where the temptations of alcohol and substance abuse, uh, the cyber bullying, etc., it, it, it can come to, to a head in second year. So it's very important that they have the strength of character and they know themselves and to know what they're about um, to face some of those challenges. Um, it's very important to respect each other, uh, to get on with each other. I'll talk about bullying later, um, and to respect our teachers. We have a long tradition in Belvedere College of respecting the teachers. When I first started in Belvedere College, I couldn't get over, at the end of every lesson, the students thanked the teachers, and it was a beautiful thing. Uh, I was taken aback. I actually first thought they were taken, they were messing. Uh, and then I asked a colleague to say, every one of them thanked me. 
And yeah, and he said that's the tradition in Belvedere. So I think it's a lovely tradition. I think it's something that we, we, we try to foster and continue. Uh, and Mr Foley touched on this. I think another important aspect for the students is at all times they feel safe. You know, if you're concerned about your, your, your son, please let us know. Please, please let us know. And, and we'll keep an extra eye on him. Um, the transition from first to second year uh, it can be very challenging. You know, they're hitting adolescence, they're hitting puberty, uh, but they need to be organised. Some students are not organised. It's just as simple as that. They, their, their, their journal is not used, their bag is all over the place, they don't have the correct copies with them. Um, so they need to make sure they're organised and they need to engage in hard working. What is you as parents can do and guardians as the primary educators? Well, you can set goals and tasks with your son. I know they're getting to that bit older. Uh, it might become more of a tension with you trying to sit down with them to, to have these conversations. They may actually reject you. They may not want that. Uh, but you can set goals and tasks. Um, for example, you have to be realistic in those goals. So, for example, if you've got 45% in a summer exam in a subject, well, there's no use saying that you know you should be trying to get 80 in that exam in that Christmas. Like that's unrealistic, and he may get 80, but he might put all his time into um, trying to achieve that. So these goals they need to be manageable. They need to be small steps, but consistent set steps. Um, Belvedere is a Jesuit school. How do we uh, improve with learning? We improve by repetition. The Jesuits. It's a 500 year tradition in education. They were a great believer in repetition. They were, great believing, they were a great believer in testing, retesting, etc. I personally am a great believer in writing things down. It doesn't work for all students, I appreciate that, but for the majority of students, it does work. If they're studying, they get out their notes, they organize themselves, they get out a pen, different color pens, and they write stuff down. They look over it, they, they study it, they close over the copy, they test themselves by writing it down and they, they keep that repetition going, test, retest, etc. Um, so I think that would be aware of that as, as an educator. If they're sitting there just daydreaming, looking at the, sco the, 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 the screen with a social media beside them, they're not studying properly. They're not studying properly. This is work at the end of the day. You know, if you go to the dictionary and look up the definition of work, you know, it doesn't have fun and relaxation beside it. Work means work. So they need to engage in proper work when they're studying as well. They should study for 25 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes at a time, and then take a break of five minutes. A second year student should be doing between two to three hours work at night. That's the recommendation, two to three hours work at night. How they do that, that's up to themselves and yourselves to sort of plan out, but it should be between two to three hours at night. If they're only doing 20 minutes, they're fooling themselves. You know, they may have um, only two pieces of written work. They may have no piece of written work They'll still have six, seven, eight subjects that day. There are still six, seven, eight subjects that they can learn and study that, that day. So when parents sometimes say to me, you know, oh, he gets no homework, i sorry, I don't entertain it. If he has had seven subjects that day, there are seven pieces of study to be done if there's no written homework. Um, make sure he studies in an appropriate study area, the same area, that he's not moving around the house in different areas, and that it's pr uh, properly... Uh, 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 good air moving through and it's well lit as well um, it's recommended that you get your study done early in the night I think I'm, si I'm preaching to the converted here you all know this you don't, they don't sit down at half nine start studying and doing their homework get that done early I know they'll have GA and they'll have uh, football and things like that as well but try to get it done early as possible check their journals I will be checking their journals the form tutors will be checking their journals make sure that um, they're filling in their journals and I'll talk a bit about that later how do you communicate with us as parents? Well, I've already told you, if you have an issue, please pick up the phone and talk to me or email me and I'll, I'll give you my phone number and email later. Um, you can communicate to the journal. The journal has a whole array of information. Pick up and look at the journal someday. It is incredible the amount of information it has. And if you put a note in the journal, if you need to communicate with a subject teacher, etc., you can use Compass. How do you use Compass? Go to the, our school website. There's the Parents tab, and under the Parents tab, you'll see a link for Compass. You'll actually see a link for Parent Resources, and then under Parent Resources, go to Compass. And that will allow you to access Compass. And again, you can communicate through Compass. The newsletter has a variety of information each week. And then another, uh, the, we communicate with you through the newsletter. 
you can communicate with us through both the journal and compass and also parent reply forms um, I think when your son gets his results at Christmas and his reports I think it's very important that you fill out a parent reply form on the whole teachers enjoy getting these they tend to be very positive they tend to focus on you know uh, how your, your son did etc and you know you can feed back to those parent reply forms where you think you, your son is at in the subject you know um, and I think we benefit from that en enormously because you obviously also have uh, good insight where he's at. Um, what will we also be doing in relation to your academic progress of your son? At October he'll be given an effort grade uh, and the form tutor and myself, so he'll be given an effort grade by the subject teacher from one to five. The form tutor and myself will sit down and we'll look at these effort grades, grades and if we feel he's underperforming, if there's a lot of twos and, and threes instead of fours and fives, then we'll, um, we'll come up with a plan. It may be a report card, it may be a phone call home, it may be a letter home. Uh, we'll come up with a variety of strategies to sort of engage him. But again, we'll put the emphasis on him working more because at the end of the day, we can come up with as much strategy as possible. He needs to work and that's just the bottom line. And all the students that do well in exams, the va well, all, almost all, the vast majority of them will say that they worked hard. The November parent-teacher meeting, uh, it's the 8th, I think. Um, um, that's, uh, it, maybe with the form tutors this year, uh, we'll, I'll confirm that closer to the date. Um, you will get, at Christmas, he'll get results. He'll also get a form tutor comment. Monitor those results carefully. Compare them to his summer uh, results from the end of first year. Just bear in mind that those Christmas exams will be a cul culmination of the first year work and also the first term of second year. So sometimes there's a slight dip. Uh, so he might have got 72 at uh, summer of first year. He might get 68 at Christmas of uh, second year. If you feel he's been working in that subject, don't be alarmed if it's gone down two or three percent because sometimes you know there is that extra work. Now if he's dropped significantly and you know he hasn't been working, then that's an issue. Um, and again, we'll monitor those results and we'll keep a very close eye on them. And if we feel he's underperforming, we will contact home. Um, and then the summer results at the end of second year, again, the results and comments, and they'll be available on Compass. So we track these results throughout the, the, throughout the year. Um, homework. Homework is given regularly and it includes memory work. Again, I, as a year head, I deal with parents who say to me that uh, he doesn't get any homework. Now, there's two parts to that. One, he's not putting the homework into the journal, which I'll talk about in a minute. That's always an issue. The second thing is he always has homework. As I said, if he's six subjects that day, he has homework in every single one of those subjects. He has some learning to do in those subjects. He might be right out to key words in geography or history. It might be uh, a formula that he has to learn, uh, uh, a French vocab or whatever. But he has memory work in his subjects. So there is homework doesn't have to be written. Homework doesn't have to be written down. Uh, it, he doesn't have to be given three questions to write down. It can include memory work. I would ask you to check the journal and check it regularly. Uh, um, the journal is stamped by form tutors in your head. If he has no homework and he says he's no homework, just bear in mind that 14 year olds have an incredible capacity for moral maneuverability. They will say they have no homework and then when they're challenged on it, actually well, I'd had homework and this and this and this. So you know yourself what uh, they can be like at that, that age. Um, he needs to take responsibility for his organisation, especially now that he's in second year, especially because the DES guidelines say that we're not allowed to have lockers in school at the moment. Uh, so he needs to get to school on time. He needs to get to class on time. He needs to have the correct equipment. Very, very simple thing with personal organisation. And sometimes we forget the simple stuff. Sometimes we try to move to this strategy and this strategy. He needs to sleep well, he needs to eat well. They are the premise, they are the foundation of which good education sits on. You know, he should be sleeping nine hours a night and he will function much better the next day in school. He should be eating well and he'll function much better uh, in school. Um, there's a survey done recently. Um, Nine-year-olds, now I know it's a different age group, uh, have lost, they're sleeping one hour less than uh, what uh, a generation ago of nine-year-olds did slept. And that's because of things like social media. So just bear that in mind. Let's never move away from the very simple stuff, the basic stuff, because that actually builds. You build a house from its foundations at the end of the day. Um, 
students need to take responsibility for their own work and CBAs. I'll talk about CBAs in a minute because it's very important. Um, they need to make sure their notes are organised from first year and they need to record their uh, work in their, their, their journal. Now, I'm asked at times to help do a study plan out for students. I will actually say that the best study plan a student could have is use his journal properly. He must write out his subjects from the night before, from Monday, Tuesday, whatever, down the, 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 the one of the columns, and then beside it, in class, take out his journal at the end of the class and write down his written work if he's given it, and beside it, what he needs to study that night in that subject, what they've just learnt. That's perhaps the best study plan he could create, using the journal properly, having it all there in front of him uh, um, every day, each week. Um, he can also use a study plan, um, but again, if he's using a study plan, which I do recommend as well, keep it simple, keep it straightforward, don't complicate it. Um, um, he needs to look for errors from a summer test. Has he asked his teachers for feedback? Has he seen feedback uh, from his summer tests? Has he, does he, ha, has he, made, has he written those, that, those, that feedback out, etc.? He needs to make sure that page 37 of the journal is signed because this addresses the code of behaviour and the code of behaviour is also um, linked to the appropriate sanctions uh, if he misbehaves in, in school. He must make sure that his uh, full school uniform is worn. I'm a stickler for this. I believe that we need to take pride in our uniform. We need to own it. Um, it, it represents us as a school. It represents our traditions and our roots. Uh, so I won't have any truck with black runners or canvas runners or van shoes. There should be no hoodies, uh, including the bevet or crested ones. Uh, he must have a white shirt and a jumper. And if he doesn't wear the jumper, it must be a tie and a black uh, jacket. And there'll be vice principals on the door in the morning checking. If I see second years not dressed like that or other students not dressed like that, I will challenge them on it and there will be sanctions. Uh, punctuality. School starts at 8.40. He should be in at 8.35. Now that's just a, a basic, basic a st a starting point to any school day. Any student running in late, uh, you know, it's, it, they're starting off today on the, on the, on the wrong foot. Um, if, you're, if he's going to be late, if there's an issue, the late note should come to us before 8am. We're not trying to cause extra problems for parents, but you just need to bear, 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 bear in mind that if you send in a late note and he's running late, or he has to leave class. Um, that has to be processed by the system, so that takes a bit of time. So just try and get that information in before eight o'clock, if possible. Um, we, on regard mobile phones, we introduced a site-wide ban two years ago. It's been a resounding success. It's been an outstanding success. Um, and it, you've, you, you've bought into that. It wouldn't have been as, as much success if parents and guardians hadn't bought into it. But it's the same system as last year. He, if he has his phone on him when he comes into school, it must be turned off and in his pocket. Uh, if he takes out his phone during the day and he hasn't been given permission to take out the, the phone during the day, there's the following. If it's on a Monday or Tuesday, if it's, it'll be confiscated on Monday or Tuesday, he'll get it back on a Thursday. If it's confiscated on Wednesday or Thursday, he'll get, it'll be returned on a Friday. And if it's confiscated on Friday, it'll be returned to follow on Monday. So the message is don't have the phone out. Uh, we lock the phone in a secure box uh, in the staff room. Um, so just bear that in mind. The parents' handbook has an array of information. It's on the school website. Go into the parents tab. You'll see it. It really can answer the vast, vast, vast majority of your questions. Um, just with regard to behaviour and sanctions, I am firm. I really passionately believe that education is one of the greatest gifts human, humanity has given to itself. And I really do not have much time when students disrupt the learning of others and the education of others. So there will be sanctions. I will follow the code of behaviour, but if a student is misbehaving, I will have zero tolerance for that misbehaviour, uh, especially if it's persistent and it's consistent. Um, you know, I, my fundamental responsibility is to the learning and the education of each student in that class. And if a student sets out to undermining the learning of, of, the, of the class and others in it, then I have to tackle that. I just have to. It's my job. And I know you'll support me on that. Uh, but I'll deal with behaviour. I will never be personal. Um, security. They need to make sure their clothing is labelled, the uh, iPad is labelled, the bag is labelled. Uh, they need to be vigilant leaving school. 
especially in the winter months. When winter draws in in November here, the inner city is dark and it can be dreary and it can be unsafe at times. I'm not trying to alarm you, but they just need to be watched when they leave that, those doors, that they're not, their head is not stuck on their mobile phone and they're not aware of their surroundings. They need to be aware of their surroundings. Yeah, we all know something can happen. A phone can be taken off them very quickly, etc. So that's something that you just need to be mindful of. Um, and then co-curricular. We're trying to get back up to our full programme. Um, we'll, get, we'll probably get there this year now, back to our full programme. Rugby is on a Monday in Cabra. It's on a Wednesday in Cabra and Friday in Distillery. And if they don't have... <coughs> Friday in Distillery. Um, if they have... Just one second. Uh, it's in Friday in Distillery Road. Um, some days they'll have a match on Saturday morning. So if they have a game on Saturday morning, they won't have training up the Friday. Um, contact Mr. Keelan if you have any questions about rugby. Athletics is on a Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Now, it's not definite those three days every week, but I will always let the second just know what days. But I'm looking at, at the moment, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So if, obviously if they do rugby of a Monday, they'll be going to rugby. But there will be athletics Monday for guys not doing rugby. They'll... There'll be athletics on the Tuesday and there'll be athletics on the Wednesday. And I'm the contact person there, as is Mr. Duggan. Uh, debating is on a Thursday after school with Mr. Hogan. It's not started yet, but it'll be starting back very soon. Science Buzz is with Ms. Mr. Graham. Now you can email Mr. Graham. He, he loves communication. Uh, he hasn't confirmed the date with me yet, but Mr. Graham has all the information on that. Again, string and percussion. Ms. Curtin is the person responsible for that. Strings and percussion. She's waiting back till the next level of restrictions are eased um, I think it's the 22nd of October so uh, Miss Curtin is the contact person there Miss Oliver is starting drama club again on a Monday after school and the choir is a Friday after school and the junior VDP is Friday after school as well so there is an array of activities that your son uh, will be involved in I'll be talking to the form tutors about co curricular involvement of, the, of each of their tutees I'll be talking to your sons about what activity they're involved in I'll be checking in with them over the next month uh, and to find out exactly uh, what co-curricular activity they're involved in I recommend two I recommend a sport and a non-sport uh, activity uh, for the holistic development um, the new junior I want to talk a bit about CBAs now CBAs are new um, they're called continuous based assessments I think we need to plan ahead with this because otherwise there'll be issues. Um, the, the junior cycle is now up and running in all subjects and a part of the junior cycle is a continuous based assessment that's worth 10% overall uh, of, the, of the exam results. Now they do a CBA in second year. Uh, this CBA is not always counted as the overall result. Um, They'll do it in the vast majority of subjects in second year. I will be sending out a timetable of when those CBAs are going to take place. They take place in a three-week period. So, for example, science might be in March of 2021. And they'll do in class, they'll work on a project over those three weeks. There may be a couple of CBAs running concurrently at the same time. So they just need to make sure that they stay on top of the work and they do exactly what's asked by the teachers. Um, They'll then give, be given a descriptor of what they achieved. So they might be given exceptional, above expectation, meets expectation, or yet to meet expectation. And that goes on their junior cycle uh, certificate uh, when they get it at the end of third year or the start of fourth year. Um, it's separate from a terminal exam. They still set a terminal exam. This is if in outside the COVID world. I'm taking it that the junior cycle will go back to normal at the end, next June. So. Um, they'll set a terminal exam hopefully in June as they would have uh, pre-COVID um, where can you get more information I put this um, PowerPoint I put it on the website and, you, and this web, web address is for you to get more information on CBAs I just want to talk a bit about the yoga adolescents uh, Rudiments year coincides with puberty and adolescent development it's a really important stage of the development it's an absolutely essential crucial stage in their growth uh, they need to go through it. It's a period that sometimes instills fear into some people. Oh, they're hitting puberty. It's actually often a period when they can hit 
and fall upon their passions and interests that they have for life. They can find their love of something in this, this age group that they can have for the rest of their life. So just bear that in mind. There's an extraordinary range of developments and this can pres present challenges to students. When you're going through it yourself, you probably don't realise it, but it's only when you come out of it you realise that actually puberty was more difficult than, than I thought. Uh, and sometimes this can be challenging for parents and educators. So just bear that in mind. Um, the, there's a neuroscientist called Sarah Jane Blakemore and she said that teenagers are brilliant. You might roll your eyes at that, but she, I want to read out what she actually said about teenagers. She said that up until about 15 to 20 years ago, we just didn't know about, that the brain develops at all within the teenager years. Until then, it was assumed that teenage behaviour was down to hormonal changes in puberty. But brain scans and psychological experiments have now found that adolescence is a critical period of neurological change, much of which is, much of which is responsible for the unique characteristics of adolescent behaviour. Far from being a defective or inferior version of an adult brain, the adult, adolescent mind is both unique and, to Blake more beautiful. Teenagers, she said tenderly, are brilliant. Now, you know, most of the time I would say, but she's trying to make out that that brain that's going on in, in a teenager is very complex, very talented, and sometimes maybe we misappreciate it. Um, what are the challenges that Rudiman students face? Well, peer pressure is a huge challenge, you know, um, particularly around substance abuse and alcohol and the use of technology. I don't want to frighten you, but you, you already know this. Substance abuse and alcohol, uh, they can rear their ugly head in, in as to, at the age of 14. We will ad try to address it in school. We address it through SPHE in our SE classes. I bring in the guards around November they talk. They do an excellent talk on substance abuse uh, and alcohol, and you know the background to it, the laws, uh, and and they give it, they put it into context, etc. Owen Kyo, our chaplain, does a talk on substance abuse as well. So that will be very informative. Again, the par you as parents are the primary educators there, but we will try and support you as best as possible. I know you won't be under the, uh, the, the illusion that oh my son would never do anything. Just be very mindful. There, it's 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 it is accessible. It's readily available, and just be vigilant. I think vigilance is a very important word for you as you move through negotiating these next few months and years with, with, with your sons. Um, bullying is another challenge. I have a zero policy towards bullying. I abhor bullying. I'm not talking about a low-level one-off name-calling. I'm talking about something that might be a nasty name-calling, something that's consistent, persistent something that undermines the individual, something that takes away from the dignity of the human being, something that takes away from the development of, 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 of the, the young adolescent. For me, that's bullying. If it reduces somebody, takes away their confidence, it's bullying. And I will strive rigorously, diligently, and with your support, I will strive to stop, stamp it out. I, and I deal with busty with bullying. If you have an inkling that your son might be bullying, bullied, you let me know straight away and I will investigate thoroughly and I'll investigate the ends of the earth and make no apology for that. Sometimes I've had difficult conversations with parents. I've had to say to the, the parents that, you know, your son is engaging in bullying. Like, it may be, you know, the, when I say bullying, I have to be careful of that word. You know, I don't think any child sets out to bully, but, you know, sometimes their actions lead to somebody being bullied. So again, it's education. Again, it's having that conversation with both the student that's been bullied and the student that's bullying. So let me know. Be very vigilant with social media. Uh, if your son has been bullied, t take a uh, picture, take the evidence. Uh, they leave a digital footprint. I think that's very, very important. It, it, I suppose, I mean, selfish here, it makes my job a bit easier because I have to investigate less if I can see it there and then. Um, I still will investigate, but just take that picture if you, if, if you see evidence of bullying. Um, again, if I have that conversation with you, if I have a phone call to say that your son is engaging in some form of bullying, please don't take it personal. They, they don't set out to bully themselves. They just need to be educated on it. Um, um, we'll do a workshop on bullying. Uh, uh, we'll do a workshop on cyberbullying. Again, it's dealt with an SPHE and uh, RSE. But my bottom line is, if it takes away from the dignity and development 
and it takes away from the confidence of, of uh, a student in my care, I will challenge it and I will tackle it and I make no apologies for that. Um, it's dealt also, it's discussed in religion class as well. Cyberbullying is a huge issue. We, the anti-bullying policy is in the journal. We deal with the who, the what, the where, the when and how. We follow the anti-bullying policy when we're investigating a bullying incident. Um, well-being is something we're very, very mindful of in the school. It's embedded in the new junior cycle. Uh, we emphasise regular exercise, sleep, good diet, etc. Um, the issue of alcohol uh, is dealt with in SPHE, etc. Um, we have a strong support structure in the school. The subject teachers, the form tutor, the year head, the vice principal, headmaster. We have chaplaincy as well. If the student needs to have a chat with a chaplain, we'll 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 um, we will we'll, we'll set that about. We'll make sure that uh, he, your son sees a chaplain. We'll, it'll be done discreetly. Um, we have a care student support team for students that we feel maybe need an extra eye. You know, they might need just need that extra monitoring. Um, parents, you know, primary educators, guardians, and primary educators. I will sometimes say, just I think you need to bring it to a uh, GP. And don't be alarmed by that. Sometimes it's just simple that if his mood is very low, it just means he might need iron. That's to, or he might be just be a bit anemic or something. So sometimes it can be very simple as well. And that's why sometimes if we feel it's medical, we'll say bring him to a GP. Uh, the SPHE RSE uh, curriculum is on the school website. You're entitled to know what's been taught in, in RSE and SPHE. Uh, so I strongly recommend that you, uh, you you check that out. And then finally, the key dates in the year. You know, it's eight weeks now until the midterm begins, the 23rd of October. The parent-teacher meeting is uh, the Tuesday, the 9th of November. Uh, the school will close Wednesday, the 22nd of December, and you return to school the 9th of January. There's six weeks down to midterm, uh, February the 18th, and then the six weeks to the Easter holiday from Friday, April the 8th, uh, and then finally the f five weeks to the house exams the 22nd 29th of may so break the year up into those dates it's in the journal it's on the school website and i strongly recommend that you, you get your son to break the year into those dates uh, if you need to contact me and i strongly recommend you contact me if there's an issue it's 01-858-6612 that's a direct line and i'm not always there i'm teaching but i'll, I'll get back to you and be or at bevid or college .ie. and I, as I said at the start, I strongly believe in communication. I've heard from Mr. Rogan last year's year head that they're a very year, good year group. I'm looking forward to working with them. I will do my best. I will give 100% to support them as best I can, so that they can be the best that they can be. Thank you. I'm going to hand you over now to Mr. Bryce, the vice principal. Thank you very much, Mr. O'Shea. Hope you had a lovely summer and welcome back to our students and to use parents back into our community. It seems like a long time ago that we were, I spoke to your, your sons at Camp Belvo on induction week. And I want to say congratulations for all that happened last year as families and you, as you started your journey through Belvedere College. I won't be long. Um, we've had a, a good bit of time now. We're 53 minutes in, as I can see. I just want to go over a few points that I would have said to you this time last year. I spoke to the boys in their first assembly last week, and I went through the three points that I spoke to them about last year and I spoke to you about them. Point one was what our college is all about, our vision to create men for others, to create men that go out and make the world a better place. And we saw last year, and I'll credit Mr. Rogan and his start as the year head of, of your sons and an excellent job they did, we saw this throughout um, the first year community, now Rudiments. They are a wonderful group of young men. In difficult circumstances, coming in to the college in COVID times with 1.1 meter between everyone, um, with lack of activities, we saw 130 boys down on a Saturday morning in the lashing rain uh, for rugby. And it was amazing. And they did a really, really good job of bonding and and getting to know each other, a lot of times online, and um, working together. And this is a new year, and they're not the bottom of the school anymore. They're now second years. There are now people who they will know from their primary schools who are younger than them, who will look up to them, and what it is to be a Belvedereian. And they have to show that example. 
they have prefects again this year and they'll see the, the example of what a man for other looks like in their classroom every morning they have their form tutors the same form tutors they had in first year they have people to look up to to talk to my second point last year was that no student should ever leave this college 335 unhappy anxious angry worried upset anything the best thing about this college is that there are people here who are here to listen who are here to help I say it all the time that we can solve something at 335 a lot better than if it goes on for two three days later and we find out about it please encourage them to come talk to us if you hear something in the evening as Mr O'Shea has said a few times in the speech there please do let us know we are here to help that is our job that goes the same for for yourselves as parents and guardians if there's anything that comes up that you feel that you'd like and um, that just doesn't sit right just pick up the phone and ring us Brennan's after giving us the call number there you have my email please do let us know anything that we can do to help and the quicker we deal with things the less anxiety we have for the young men that they can get on with it and they'll know where to turn to if anything goes wrong and the last thing the main point I had was getting involved I told you about the head boy who and why it was my first day back after a long time away from the college said if you leave every day at 3.35 you're wasting your time here you're missing out on um, an amazing opportunity we build relationships outside the classroom now, I know so many of your sons from my time in the rugby or different trips or different things we did last year hopefully you'll be seeing more of drama the choir did an amazing job last year but public speaking other activities are going to are going to pick up now that we're into um, sort of nearly at post-COVID restrictions that we can start to move on. What are they getting involved in? What are they doing? There's something for everything. There's something for everyone. There's something that we can do. And if we don't have an activity that your son can get involved in, we'll come up with it. Last year we introduced a chess club because a group of fourth years decided that's what they want to do. So we put some teachers, we invested in, and we had competitions with lots of other schools. That was a student-led initiative. We got behind it because of what the boys wanted to do. But they need to be getting involved. They need to build those relationships with their teachers, their peers, outside the class. That's how they become the young men we know they're going to become, those men for others. If you mentioned three times already, but I want to reference the parents' handbook. Everything is there for you. Um, it's on the website, please look there. You'll find parents, e uh, teachers' emails, and all our uh, procedures are there. The newsletter Mr. Foley um, mentioned, Mr. Duggan, who's a former tutor in the year, puts it together with his editorial team. It is exceptional. If there's anything new your son's been involved in that you think should be in there, please let us know, and we'll put it in there. The Compass app was introduced this year. Uh, we've invested a lot in our information technology, our IT structures. Teachers have laptops, which will hopefully, if we ever end up in um, lockdown again, help support that. But also we're moving towards the hybrid learning of Teams and OneNote and other Microsoft applications to try and make things a bit better for the boys to make our, our learning and teaching stronger and more adaptable. We've also moved to this Compass app and all parents should now be on it. That's how you um, send in your late notices or absence notice. If you have any questions on that, let me know. I'll be able to help you. Any issues of passcodes and stuff, just send me an email. Um, I have access to all that and it's quicker to go through me on that. Two last things from me. Hard work. First year is a time where our boys, your sons, came in and it's, it's a big new school. They get the bus, they get the train, they, they get up earlier, they come in. It's not the same as primary school and they've done really, really well. However, now they're a year and a half year and three quarters away from their junior cycle exams they've got their CBAs coming up in second year there's a lot to do Mr O'Shea has spoken in depth about um, how they can do that and study timetables and using the journal however it is hard work they've got five years left now in college and then some of them will go on to university the majority will go on to university or they might do an apprenticeship but there's exams and there's hard work involved in all these things as you know they will need to work hard getting that routine at home having a quiet place to do their homework starting that process now it's really important i won't go over ground that mr o'shea said but that hard work is there and if you feel that your son struggles with that or struggles against that routine 
Please do let us know through this form tutor and through Brendan. It's really important that we get those routines like right now. And so Shea says this every year. I don't know if he said it there, but second year in his mind is the most important year. Because this is when they get their routines involved in. This is where they, they really find that place in the college where where they they feel they can contribute, whether it is the Vince Nepal or or rugby or athletics or drama or public speaking or the wind or public speaking or the wind bands, whatever it may be. But it's also very important because this is where they get the routine for study and for hard work, doing their homework, staying on top, getting organized. My final thing is, and this is what I said to the boys um, last week in their assembly, we are the best school in the country. I'm very biased on that, as you know, but we are the best school in the country for many things. For our stuff that happens outside the classroom, for our amazing results we got yesterday morning. Phenomenal results, 23 people over 600 points. What is your son, this is the question to them, I've asked them, what are they doing to make this an even better community? What are they doing to continue ensuring that this college is the best for the students to come after them? And for our reputation outside the college in terms of coming to school every day, however they do that, getting involved in Vince Nepal, what are they doing on the sporting pitch? What is that? What is, what is their contribution? Every one of our boys is got so many talents, so many gifts. What is it? What is it that they bring? Do they know that? It could be their personality in class. It could be how they, in the junior VDP or on the pitch, how they inspire people. It could be their wit, their uh, funny jokes, the way they make someone else feel who's having a difficult time. But what is it that they're bringing? What are they sharing? Because we know they have those talents. That's the question I posed to them last week. That's something I'd like at home if you could talk about. What is it that they bring? Because that's what makes our college the best. That's what makes our college the place that so many people want their sons to come to. So I thank you, and Mr Foley said it starts, for your support. Um, the messages at the end of last year, the messages that started this year. It's not ideal, these COVID um, restrictions. It's not ideal that second years aren't in one corridor, that they're around the school. We're hoping when we get clarification from the Department of Education, hopefully very soon, we can start to go back to one lunch break. We can put some walls up in our classrooms um, and not have our temporary classrooms that all the schools around the country have. We don't want that. We are looking forward to getting back to a bit of normality, in particular the one lunch that your sons have never um, achieved or never been part of. So thank you um, for your support. Again, pick up the phone, let us know. Um, have a wonderful, wonderful evening and uh, thank you very much.